you know, you could try to just put a clamp on your mouth or uh, try to put on a happy face, but without that connection with spirit, it would just be empty. It would just be another pretense, and we don't want those pretenses. So that's why we have this great opportunity here to really go deeply into this belief system called ego, to go very deep and to expose it, and to reach that state that is beyond the opinions. Uh, I find that in my journey, in my life, questions were, were very helpful. They were always encouraged, and not so much questions about like the gossip of the world, who did what to what, and, and what's the latest on this, and what's the breaking news, not those kind of questions, but questions about the mind, about consciousness, about perception, about beliefs, about the thought system. Those are all helpful questions because they tend to unravel the ego. And the ego, if there's anything that should be questioned, it is the ego. The ego is, is not something to just assume is real and true and just kind of leave it alone. Uh, you do have to question what you believe and to be free of it. So, to me, those are very helpful questions. I have seen teachers of the Course over the years that will, that will not even respond to questions of the world. Uh, that will say, that's not a real question, move on to the next one. And uh, in one sense, we want to encourage the spirit of asking those real questions, but again, we're not putting any kind of limits or parameter. So, you can still feel free to ask any question, whether it's about something in physicality, or something in the mind, something about consciousness, just feel free and open to ask anything. Another thing about this is, uh, how far do you take this stuff? And you take it all the way. Yes. Anyone who isn't really interested in taking it all the way to enlightenment, uh, will soon tire of me, uh, because uh, they usually don't hang around, and they don't show up, and that's fine too. Uh, my lesson always was, take it all the way, and in taking it all the way, you will see that nothing can be judged. Uh, there aren't judgments about people who, people who are taking it all the way, or who aren't. There aren't judgments about you know, who's getting it and who's not getting it. In the state of forgiveness, everything is equally acceptable. And there isn't this sense of time delay. And there isn't this sense of uh, before, during, and after. It's a unification experience. It's a state of mind where everything is completely unified. And in that unification, there's really nothing to question or nothing to confront. And it's really been good. Uh, over the years, I've just watched a lot of things that have gone on in this world, and a lot of things that have gone on with the Course. And I never felt it was, there was anything to confront in form. There was never a person to confront. Um, also, I remember reading it in the teacher's manual that to an advanced teacher of God, there is no challenge, and I thought, well, oh, that's cool. No challenge. Hmm. Not that the experiences you go through don't seem challenging, they certainly can seem very challenging to the ego, but it's that, that you really don't have to go challenge anybody. You don't have to challenge anybody on their beliefs. There's no one to convince. Um, that's the best part I find of traveling around this world and going to these 26 countries is, I had an experience where I could feel the contentment and the peace and the joy in my heart and I knew that I, there was nobody to convince. And you really, you have this feeling of being relieved or off the hook when you have this feeling. That way you can talk to anybody. You don't really care whether they profess to believe in something or not. Whether they profess to believe in God or not. Suddenly, this old thing about whether somebody is a believer or a non-believer, who cares? I mean, who really cares 
uh, if somebody's a believer or a non-believer, when you're in the joy yourself, everyone is in that experience with you. You feel totally connected. Like in quantum physics, you feel like you're part of the unified field. You feel that everything and everyone is, is, is you. It's literally, not figuratively or sentimentally, but it's just all of you. So, in that sense, there's nothing to challenge, there's nothing to confront, there's nothing to defend. And I've just watched over the years, with, even with A Course in Miracles, as it seemed to go through its uh, copyright things and copyright controversies and different things. It's just been this soft, gentle watching, knowing that there's nothing to fix or change. That nobody's really wrong. It's just the playing out of the script. And it's a very peaceful sense of watching. But there's no sense of fixing or changing anything. And that's what I would like to talk with you about in the coming days. Um, because to me, this experience I'm describing to you is most practical. A lot of times people can say, it, sometimes these things sound kind of high and mighty, or they sound glorious, but they don't seem very practical when it comes down to day-to-day -to -day decisions, day-to-day -day decision making. And what I want to talk with you about, and really join together with you in, is, is joining in the willingness to just let go of every belief, every scrap in the mind where there seems to be the slightest bit of controversy or conflict or ill at ease feelings. Just to subtly get in touch with what those are and to be willing to let them go. And to really see that there's no cost in releasing these feelings. It's not really like something terrible is going to happen to you if you quit judging, or if you, if you quit um, discriminating, if you, if you quit trying to pick at things, it's not like something will, will be lost. I find in my life that, that as I've gone on this journey deeper and deeper, where I had anticipated a, a sacrifice of some kind, it's just like getting up close to it and going, that was nothing at all. I can laugh, like I can't believe I was so afraid of, of looking at that. I can't believe that I pushed that down for so long. I should, you know, you, you have the feeling like, wow, just let it all come up. And I think too when I talk about trust, it's not so much that you have to develop more trust. Because a lot of times people think, I just need more faith and more trust, but it's just that, that the power of our mind is, is, is enormous. And when you have invested that power in a false belief system, it's more that you have to unplug from it, or divest from the ego, instead of get more trust. And that's just another ego trip. You know, when the ego is telling you, you're not trusting enough. You're, you're not, you don't have enough faith. That's just another kind of a push from the ego. That you're not good enough. That you need to be better. And it's not so much that we have to be better at anything. We just have to e expose the ego and pull all of our faith and trust away from it. And see that the spirit is worthy of our trust. That our guidance that small still voice inside that's guiding us is extremely worthy of our trust. And if we follow it, it brings states of un unlimited happiness and, and freedom. And more than anything, that's what I, I want to convey to you. I have really dedicated my life to living the experience of the Course. Of, of enlightenment, to actually living it, 